Last weekend's story about a baby having her bank account closed on grounds of fraud has turned up a whole host of people who've been denied banking for no apparent reason. Yeah, the problem was discovered by Radio 4's Moneybox programme. Paul Lewis is here and Paul, just remind us of this, this case and what's been going on. Yes, well, the baby, of course, neither of you was here last week, but the baby was uh, six months old. She had her account closed for no apparent reason, and it was because of, there'd been a false fraud allegation. She yeah. must have been okay. furious. <laughs> well, we had, we, did, we had her crying on the programme, actually, <laughs> or a baby crying. Um, but what it's turned up for us is a rather frightening scenario. Imagine if you went home today, John, and there was a letter saying, um, you know, Dear Mr Kay, uh, we've uh, decided to close your bank account because you no longer meet our criteria for business. And that's it and your account will be closed in 14 days. And then you think, well, OK, I'll open another one, and the next bank says, no, I'm sorry, no. Are you, oh, you're that chap. No, we're not going to open a And they know, do they? It's, it's yes, interconnected because th enough. Th there's a fraud flag, it's called, from an organisation called CFAS, um, which is attached to your name. It's different from your credit record. Now, this is obviously a very useful service where fraud is involved. But what we've discovered is it can very often be a false allegation which isn't carefully enough checked. And you get a letter, gives you no reasons, you don't even know it's fraud if you get a letter like that, and you've no right of appeal. And that really is the problem. Um, so what do you do in that case if you find yourself without a bank account? Well, it's almost impossible nowadays. I mean, a young lady we've spoken to, Lisa, it happened to her, her bank account was closed. She had to tell her employer that they could no longer pay her. They had to write a cheque to her partner so he could bank it. Mm -hmm. And as she says, she'll never get a credit card, she'll never get a bank account, never get a mortgage until it's cleared up. She even went through all the process of applying for her um, records from the bank under the Data Protection Act. And they didn't say anything more except fraud department and then brackets, these notes are closed close brackets. So she didn't know what the allegation was. Turns out it was a colleague, uh, sorry, a flatmate of hers, we think, at some point, um, who had co possibly committed a fraud, a mobile phone fraud, um, in the past, and for some, maybe in her name. And this is what often happens, that people, fraud is committed in your name by somebody else, and that goes on to your record rather than the right person and it has a devastating effect. So what can you do? Well, you can get the records, you can argue with the bank, you can go to the Ombudsman. Now I have to say Lisa did all of that and it didn't work. Mm. And even when you come to Moneybox, you know, the Moneybox effect yeah. hasn't been working in these cases and we have established that these people are not fraudsters, but it's still very difficult. And what Stephen Timms, the MP, would mm. like, because he raised this in Parliament a, a few days ago, he would like a change so that the banks but they have an overriding obligation to treat you fairly and this should mean that you get a clear statement of why and how you can appeal and prove that it's not you involved. You, you sort of expressed astonishment that even the might of Moneybox <laughs> couldn't well, get this Well, it's not might, but it's just publicity, no, isn't but it? They but don't it, want it. it? But it must be so frustrating for, the, for people who don't have that source mm. of power Absolutely. behind them. What were the reasons why that couldn't be cleared, despite all the effort going into well, it? We just all don't the know, evidence? because the banks really won't talk to us about these cases. We've had to use other sources and look at public records to establish to our satisfaction that these people are not fraudsters. And, you know, why would you come to us if you were anyway? Mm. Um, but we've established that to our own satisfaction. The banks are still making it very difficult for everybody. And Stephen Timms thinks there should be a change in the law, so mm. they have to give you reasons and a clear right of appeal. And last week, when we did the baby story that you mentioned, um, in fact, NatWest said they would do that, though at the moment we haven't seen those letters. So, but, you know, we're still collecting evidence from people. If anyone else has got this problem, yeah. they can tweet me at Paul Lewis Money or contact moneybox, uh, bbc.co.uk slash moneybox on our website and we'd like to have as much information as possible. Paul, thank you very much indeed. And Super. Uh, oh, the Moneybox is it's Radio 4 at noon. I almost forgot. The that. mighty Moneybox, as it will now <laughs> yeah. be known. I don't know about that, but Moneybox. Anyway. Thank you very much indeed. The often mighty. Uh, with